Hello, makers. I am Morik Brightstone. My master crafted me from the sticky resins of the glittering caves of Helm's Deep. I'm 28 millimeters tall, single, ladies, and also live with my parents, but I'm ready for action. Care to find out how I was crafted? Stay tuned right here, right now, on 3D Print Farm. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Today we're going to delve into the creation of 28mm gaming miniatures on a resin printer. Morik may not have been crafted in Helm's Deep, but he did come from the mind of creator Arian Croft from my mini factory. Let's download the STL. I'll place a link in the description below. Okay, I've jumped over to my Unicubic Photon Slicer and I'm searching for old Morik. Let's see, he's down here in folder, let's open that up, and there he is. Okay, as you can see, the model gets placed flat on the build plate. In order to make any changes to the model, you must select it so that it turns gold. Now I'm going to click on the supports icon and make sure all the settings are correct. For these 28mm miniatures, there's really no need for medium or heavy supports. Light supports will do just fine. Since very little resin is used, I never hollow them. So navigate to the bottom of the model and zoom in. Notice the moving black lines. These black lines represent the layers of the model as it builds out during the printing. What I'm looking for now are islands. These areas will not print if they're not supported. My job is to find them and add supports. Notice when you zoom in just right from just below, the supports become transparent so you can see where they will land. Unsupported islands are bad juju with resin printing. Notice that there's a couple over here at the tip of the hammer. And let's one along the shaft too. So I'm going to put just a couple here. Let's add a two here. I'm going to add one maybe on his thumb. No, maybe on his finger. Right there. Okay, let's go over to the other side. And you'll see his hammer as well. There's some unsupported spots there. There's an island. So I'm going to put one there. And I'll stick another one here. And you can see at the tail end of his hammer, it's not really perpendicular to the build plate. It's more perpendicular with his, it's more in line with his cloak. So when you put a support here, it's going to attach to the, uh, the actual cloak. Sometimes it takes a little finagling to get that corrected. So that looks good. Uh, one spot I'm concerned about is right under his belly. And there's an island right there. I'm just for safe measure, I'm going to put one right there all right that's five supports so far so good so next thing you need to do is click your gear icon because right now he doesn't look like he's flat with the build plate but he actually is when you click the gear icon he'll slap down flat to the build plate okay everything looks good uh, click my gear icon I'm gonna check my resin settings and your mileage may vary with your resin settings just make sure that they're uh, the correct ones for the resin that you're using Okay, the next step is really not necessary, but uh, uh, please humor me. Right now, I'm going to save the uh, save the file, and then I'm going to head over to a uh, piece of software called Preform, and it's Formlab slicing software, and it's free, uh, but it'll be available in the description below. So what I want to do is I'm going to click on the printability icon at the bottom of the screen. This program really helps me double check my work. It searches for minima, which are spots on the print that could possibly fail, and cups, which are spots on the print that cause suction. And we can talk about that in future videos. So uh, right now I'm just checking to make sure everything looks right. There's a little spot under his arm I'm really not concerned about since it is a miniature. There's another one right under his hammer. You really can't get a support under there. But overall, I like to use this program just to double check my work. Again, it's not necessary, but I like to do this. So he looks pretty good. Everything looks great. Okay, now I'm going to get out of Preform. And I'm going to go back into my Anycubic Photon Slicer. And time for a little slice and dice. So I'm going to click the Slice button and save the file. The cool thing about the resin printers is that the print time shown is not just for a single Morik. In fact, I could print an entire army of Moriks in the time it would take to print a single. 
That's because the UV light extends across the entire build plate and each model is built a layer at a time by the UV light turning on and off for a specific length of time. Now right now I'm looking at just how Morik would build on the build plate slice by slice. So here he is. He's completely finished. Uh, looks pretty good. You can see that there's a little bit of excess gooey resin that's on him in the crevices of the print, but uh, other than that, he looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take him out, wash him down with some alcohol for about 90 seconds, and make sure there's no residue left. Here's Morik enjoying a little sunbathing for his final cure. Looks pretty good. Hey guys, I want to thank you for watching this short video. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and uh, you guys have a great day.